Hey there folks, this is Josh Stony Ridge Farmer. Welcome back to the farm. Today is going to be another fun day here on the farm here in the foothills of the Blue Ridge Mountains. We have built a pond, we have graded out the pond, and now we're going to put seed on it. We're going to show you how we prep our seed bed. We're going to put down some seed. We'll talk you through the design of the pond. We'll talk you through what we're doing with the seed, the type of seed that we're using. It's early September. We've still got some days that are going to be in the upper 80s and 90s here in North Carolina. So we'll talk you through summertime seeding a bare spot on your place, your property, your farm, or just your yard, and we'll teach you about the pond. So come along today as we have a little bit of fun and we learn together about building a pond and getting some grass seed down. All right? And here's your lesson. It takes money to grow grass. That is it. If you want to do this on the cheap, you're just going to be suffering through it. You're going to have erosion. You're going to have problems. So you might as well invest the money and do a good job and do it right the first time. So what we have here is about $4,000 worth of grass seed lime and fertilizer. Now all this isn't for this one little area. The area that we'll be seeding is approximately an acre, maybe three quarters of an acre of grassland that we want around our pond. What we have is a contractor's mix that has 80% fescue or tall fescue or Kentucky 31 fescue and 20% millet. It is the hot time of year here. Fescue grass is a cool season grass. In other words, when you plant fescue grass seed, it better be cool and moist out or it's just not gonna take. So if you've been working on a bare spot in your yard all summer long, fighting it, you're not gonna win with fescue. You're just not gonna win in the summertime. So we have 80% fescue, 20% millet. Millet will grow on a rock. It will grow on anything. The seed germinates very fast and that's what we want. We wanna hit this ground with a fast growing seed. Let that get up about this high, shade and retain moisture for our Kentucky 31 fescue. Now, underneath we have 10 bags of contractors mix and the contractors mix is the millet and fescue mix. Underneath there is K31 fescue and that's what we're gonna drill down in our pastures. Later on in a future video, we'll use a grain drill. We'll show you how all that stuff works. Now, on the first pallet that we come to, we have triple 17 fertilizer. In my experience, in my area, when I put new seed down and I put triple 17 fertilizer down, it works. It makes the grass pop. It really, really takes off. So that's what's worked for me. That will get the initial grass growing. And that's what our goal is, to get it growing so we can mow it and spread those grass clippings so that the soil will retain moisture. Now underneath the fertilizer is another crucial tool that we'll be using here on the farm and that we use all over the farm. It is called SoluCal. It is a calcium supplement for your soil. It is the same as lime except for it works better, it acts faster, and you use less of it. The soil pH here on our farm is around 4 to 4.2. We want that soil pH closer to 7, so we're going to spread a bunch of SoluCal. And SoluCal is normally three bags to the acre for maintaining. We're going to put about five bags of SoluCal down on this area so that we get the pH of the soil right. If the pH of the soil isn't right, your grass seed will not grow. It will not flourish. It may come up and just go, ah, ah, help, you know, because you're trying to grow grass in an acidic environment or a basic environment. So you've got to think about soil pH. If you've got a spot or if you've got a place on your farm that you're having trouble growing grass, get a soil test and figure out what the pH of that soil is. Oftentimes, if you can correct that pH and you can provide a moist environment, you will have success with the grass. So let's get down here to the pond. I'm gonna load up a bunch of this stuff and we're actually gonna be doing all this work by hand today with the exception of using the Ventrac to smooth out and rough grade our area. We've already gone over it once. We're gonna go over it one more time to prep the seed bed and then we're gonna sling some seed. Good stuff.
that's a pretty good load right there. We're probably going to spend somewhere in the neighborhood of 500 bucks on grass seed for this area. And that's relatively inexpensive considering what we're doing is the right thing. It should take and we shouldn't have to fool with it again for years. You guys might be wondering why I'm doing all this by hand. In other words, we're just going to use our earthway spreader right there. The reason I'm doing it by hand is because I don't want to waste any grass seed, I don't want to waste any lime, and I don't want to waste any fertilizer, and I don't want to alter the pH of the water here that's coming into this pond. So I want to have as little impact on the water as I possibly can, and as much impact on the soil. Now, if you've been following the pond build, it looks so, so much better. We posted a little something to Instagram about cleaning all this up and smoothing it out with the Ventrac. We're gonna go over it one more time, and what we wanna do is just basically prep a seed bed. So the ground's already soft. We wanna cruise over it with the Ventrac, and that's a very low impact machine, and we'll hit it with the landscape rake and basically stir the soil up so when the grass seed hits, it kind of falls down and gets into the soil, not just sitting on top of the soil. That's a very important thing. Thing, and it's very important for the ground to not be too awfully compacted. Now we want our dam area to be very compacted and you can see the dam kind of curves around right here. Stick around to the end of the video and I'll tell you exactly how it all works. This is our pipe that runs through the dam. Uh, there's just a whole lot of science and a whole lot of thought process that went into this. We had lasers out here shooting the grade. A lot of work. Now a little side note over here is Frank's loader. He's rebuilding the cylinders on it and so I told him he could park over here while they rebuild the cylinders. Kind of cool. He treats me good, I treat him good. It's a good thing. Good friends. So this is our Ventrac tractor. This is a 24.8 horsepower articulating tractor. It has a little Kubota diesel engine in it and this is the root and rock or landscape rake right here. I believe they call it something different on the Ventrac website but this is the landscape rake. Now Ventrac makes attachments for drilling down grass seed. We just don't have it here on the farm right now but this is a little beast. In other words the first bit of footage that you saw this was really really rough. Big old clumps of dirt. All sorts of mess and this Ventrac really did the trick on it. I mean it just cleaned it up so nice so our pond banks are going to be awesome. Now the soil still is stirred up a little bit right here and we're going to stir it up again. The more we stir it the better it'll take seed and the better it'll take fertilizer and the better it'll take lime. Now over here are some mats, some straw matting. It's actually made of wood fiber. We'll go into detail about that and how it's installed here in just a minute but first we're we're going to go around and around and around with the Ventrac, smoothing this out, and we got to thank Golf Course. It's going to look smooth as a golf course when we get done. So we've wrapped things up with the Ventrac here and everything just smoothed out nicely. It looks absolutely great, so no complaints there. What we've got to do now is we're going to start with the grass seed. We're going to start with the thing that's the hardest to see. So we're going to spread all three of these bags of grass seed and then we're going to move to the solucal and then we're going to move to the easiest to see which will be the fertilizer. And again, this is a triple 17 fertilizer. Let me show you how I know where to set my earthway spread. Spreader. This is the solucal, and the solucal on a broadcast spreader, we want to raise the pH, so we want to go to this chart. There's a chart back here on the back of the bag. We want to raise the pH, and we want to use our Earthway broadcast spreader, and this has basically all of the name brand type spreaders that you'd see in a commercial landscaping situation. Now 18 is the setting for maintaining soil pH. We want to raise the soil pH so we want to go to the 25 setting. Same thing over here with the fertilizer. You can see the major brands are listed right here. Earthway, we want to feed 
we're probably going to go with the 16. We want to feed it pretty heavily right here. So, all right, here are the settings for the Earthway Seeder. So we have a bolt here that we can move. I'm going to set it at about 25, which would put this arm right slap in the middle right there. We'll tighten our bolt down, and then that allows us to open and close our spreader and have a stop check right there, a stopping point. So that's how we know how much to spread. Pretty interesting. I never knew this information was on these bags until somebody showed it to me. Now I showed you. Let's get busy. Typically this Earthway Seeder will hold a 50 pound bag of grass seed or two 50 pound bags of fertilizer or lime. So we are about 15 minutes in and I am three bags of grass seed down. It's going to take more grass seed than I thought. Each bag of grass seed this contractor mix costs $62. Each bag of uh, lime costs $16 a piece or solucal and each bag of fertilizer costs about $12.50 a piece. So that's the money that we're spending and each one of these rolls of matting cost $52 a piece so they're the expensive part of this job but I'm gonna roll that matting out right here the wind has picked up which is super awesome they say don't spit in the wind well don't spread grass seed in the wind either it's gonna be pretty difficult for me to roll that stuff out in the wind but I'll show you how we do it I forgot about rock pickup <laughs> This is taking the better part of a day, guys. This is all I'm doing today. All right, so we're to the last thing. We're gonna do fertilizer last. And when we put our fertilizer down, we gotta think about the slope of the land or the lay of the land. So you wanna put a little bit heavier on the top because that nutrient is gonna roll off down the hill a little bit. So you can go a little lighter down low and a little heavier up high because the nutrient is gonna roll downhill. Cool? Well, the sun is going down, man. This has been a long day. So the next part of this project is we're gonna unroll these mats. And these mats basically are 150 feet long and they're 10 feet wide. I do believe they're eight or 10, they're eight feet wide. And they will roll out on the steep part of the dam here. Cameras don't do steep ground justice. That's not really, really steep, but it's steep enough that it'll start washing. So we want to put some mats out on that. I'll probably roll two mats out right here and maybe one mat out right there. So we got to get busy. I told you before we leave that I would talk to you about the dam and about the design of this pond. So let's talk about that before we get busy unraveling this stuff. And this is simple. This is really simple stuff. You just unroll this and there are these little pins. I'll grab one. Oh, Lordy. <laughs> These little pins that stick in the ground and hold these in place. So basically you just stick them in, step on them, and that keeps the wind from picking them up and it also keeps the grass from pushing up and causing those to rise up out of the ground. We shouldn't have that issue at all. And we'll probably put seed on top of that matting as well as what's already down here underneath it. So let's talk about the pond design. So this will be right around a half an acre pond. We have the dam built across here and the pipe is right there. That is the pipe for the dam. It's an overflow type pipe. It's not a stand pipe, which you'll see sometimes out in a pond, like out in the middle. That's what we have over on this pond, a stand pipe. And the stand pipe gets clogged up all the time. And when it gets clogged up, we got to put waders on or get in a boat to clean it off. Well, when this pipe gets clogged up, we just reach down and we just clear it off. So that is a 15 inch corrugated piece of black plastic pipe. Now when the water gets up to the seven and a half inch mark on that pipe, the pond will start to flow over in this corner. There's another pipe that crosses the road over here, another culvert pipe. So the pond will go over because there's a spring up that way and that spring runs into that uh, pipe right there. So first line of defense, and this is a, a well thought out deal here, First line of defense is this pipe, okay? Once we get up to about seven inches in that pipe, seven and a half inches and the water will run down and right into the old creek bed, okay? Once we get to about seven and a half inches on that pipe, we need a place for water to escape that's not gonna wash our dam away and it'll roll right over top 
over there. Number three, in case we have another huge, huge hurricane season this year and we get five and six inches of rain over a very, very short period of time, if it gets over that pipe and it gets over that spillway, which is going to be a big, wide area, then it will go around this tree. So in other words, the dam is designed to go around this tree. So once it buries the pipe and this won't hold it, then it goes around the tree right down here and that will disperse the water right down here into the creek bed again to cross right over through here. So actually what we've done is created a catch pond to slow the water down. If you guys follow the channel, then you know we've had water problems, erosion problems, and this ditch fills up and the road runs over often, very often. This pond should be a solution to that problem. I hope. <laughs> so let's get busy and we'll roll this matting out and we'll call it a day, man. It's been a rough time. We'll get you some uh, footage of me unrolling these mats. If you have any questions about that, please post it down in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this. It looks super duper smooth, super awesome. Ventrac did a great job. Grass seed did good. I underestimated my grass seed. We put six bags of uh, contractor mixed grass seed down. We put eight bags of lime and four bags of fertilizer. Fertilizer was just fine. So good stuff. Thanks a lot for joining me today on the Stony Ridge Farm guys. I still got some work to do. We got a beautiful, beautiful sunset to enjoy as I get my work done. Thanks a lot. See you next time. Woo! We'll come on down to the Stony Ridge. Bring your wife and bring your kids. We're living life pure and sweet. That's the way it's supposed to be Stony Ridge. So the trick to this stuff is finding the sweet spot to unroll it. These cost about 52 bucks a roll and a bale of straw costs about six bucks around here. That is probably 20 bales of straw worth of matting rolled out there. The camera really does it no justice. Huh? Uh, <laughs>